Alex the car doctor back with another repair tutorial for you guys today I have the 09 Dodge Charger back in the shop I'm pretty sure well if you didn't if you may notice it from another video that I just did recently I did a water pump on this vehicle so if you want to check out that you know, look into that on my channel um, today I'll be doing a radiator because it turns out the whole cooling system was shot and the radiator had a low flow due to all the milkiness and gunky stuff when the um, coolant contaminated the oil. So I'm gonna walk you guys through this process today. I'm gonna actually be performing this job on the top. I know a lot of people perform it on a lift and drop it, do it from the bottom. I'm not gonna be doing it that way because I'm trying to consider you guys at home. Um, I used to be one of those guys. Now I have a lift and equipment. I got kind of bougie, so I'm trying to lower my standards back down ish <laughs> all right so the tools that i'm gonna be using for the job is just my common little things i got my little uh surgery tray here um i had to uncover it it was full of mess so finally unburied it i thought it would be come in handy for this video but i got my sockets my ratchet um some pliers my eight millimeter screwdriver and down here i have my drain bucket and over here got a brand new radiator when you're doing this i wouldn't recommend doing a used radiator you just it, do all this work for nothing basically this job should take you about an hour hour and a half i know it takes me about that much now the rating on this job i give about a four ten being the hardest one being the easiest so let's jump right into it grab your wrenches and let's roll all right, the first thing I'm going to do is kick my catch fan under the car. Get that in place because I am going to be draining the coolant. Speaking of coolant, you're going to want to make sure you have coolant on hand before you start the job because you will be losing your coolant. Also, please make sure you're going to be working with the cooling system. So please make sure the vehicle is cooled down. You know, make sure it's set a couple of hours prior to driving and or running it. Um, cause you don't want to be burnt by coolant with scald in that matter. Cause it does hurt. I happened to me. <laughs> so got that in place. Wait a minute. I meant to say, let it cool down prior to you starting work, the working on the car. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. So got to excuse me. Sometimes I get my words mixed up. I have my 10 millimeter moving right along. I have my 10 millimeter here. I'm going to go ahead and remove my air box just to, get better access to everything. So this is an eight millimeter um, screwdriver. It's perfect for removing light band clamps. These clips, right now it's in the lock position. So what you wanna do is just push up, then you can pull out. So, and this just pulls out. It's a um, crankcase vent. Okay, we'll pull that right out the way. All right, so the next step I, that I want to do is go ahead and loosen my lower radiator hose because when I'm, then after that I pull off my fan, but I want this to be draining while I'm doing other stuff. I went ahead and shoved it forward because it wasn't going back. All right. Next thing I'm gonna do is grab my eight millimeter and start working on the fans. I'm gonna unplug the fan. It's a little push pin right here. So you push that. Um, and it's being difficult. So I'm going to grab a screwdriver to push it for me. There we go. Ooh, she's rough. At this time, I'm going to go ahead and remove my upper radiator hose. All 
got it double clamped for some reason. Completely remove this out the way. Right. So what's holding this fan is in is two eight millimeter bolts. Another one right here. The bottom just slides in. So you just pull out from the top. I mean, yeah, you kind of push forward then pull out and it'll come right out. Alrighty, what's next? I think we're ready for the fun stuff. The next thing I'm going to do, take my 10 millimeter and undo, it's a brace right here that actually holds the radiator. I'm gonna undo that at this time. And it's going to work better if I have a socket. I was using the wrong stuff for the wrong application. Now what you can do for a, uh, make it easier on yourself, you can screw the bolt back in there if, if you don't have nowhere to put your bolts, you can screw them back in the hole that it came from, just to better keep track of everything. Just a little tip. So what I like to do, take the socket and grab it while I'm unscoring the bolt once it gets to a point where the thing stops ratcheting because it's not enough pressure to ratchet the ratchet wrench. After you get the radiator braces out the way, then you can take the radiator because you have to disconnect the radi uh, the condenser from the radiator. So how are you going to do that? You can just simply push forward and you will have a total of four bolts that you will have to remove. And looking from up top, it appears that there are eight millimeters. Let me double check that. Yes, they are eight millimeters. So I'm gonna try this tool because it has a little flex head on it. And I'm gonna use my radiator brace as a brace if I can. Let's see. Yeah, to hold that in place. work on the two top ones at first then I'm gonna switch to the bottom ones now for this one it's a little tricky because 
on the side here is that yeah that's the brace it's like right here on the side so i'm gonna use a ratchet this little swivel head ratchet works very good for this application now if your hands are small enough you can go in from this angle but i'm gonna go in from this angle because i can fit my whole arm through here and i'm gonna see if i can you probably can see it better what i'm doing right here Like I said, good people, I haven't done this in a while. So looking back at it, well, doing it now, it's actually pretty easier than I originally suspected. So it may take a little bit less time. I still give it about a four though. Because I got to consider the people that may not have the proper skill level. So, the hex bolts are down here. Come take a look at the camera. This is one right here. I'm going to go ahead and undo that one. Ooh, the camera need to focus. Is it going to focus? Come on, focus. Perfect. Okay. It's a little rusted. I'm hand wrenching for you guys today just to put myself in y'all shoes. So that's probably why you don't see me with the fancy electric tools. Doing this for y'all. No, I like hand wrenching sometimes be honest with you it just it keeps my hands in shape if that's a thing please comment in be below if if that's an actual thing keeping your hands in shape i think it is let me know in the comments oh another little tip um this circle this hole you're supposed to put it on some of these ratchets they have a ball this ball actually holds the socket. Because sometimes when you're wrenching sockets go flying off. And see, the only way you can get this off is if you push the socket release button. That is very handy. All right, so the last one. Mm, I don't know if you're gonna be able to get this one on camera. It's like hidden, first of all. But. Can you see that on camera? A little bit. Let me try from that angle. Now, I may have to switch to another ratchet on this one because this is when the swivel head becomes a pain in the butt. Let me show you what's going on up top. I'm trying to keep the ratchet straight and push so this is the boat so i'm trying to push it on there and it keeps flexing out so i'll be right back with a regular ratchet so i'm back with a regular ratchet now the hard boat i'm gonna try to explain that a little bit better and this car is now looking at it it's actually missing some parts so as you notice this area is open open right here on maybe your vehicle and other vehicles are supposed to be like a uh, plastic covering that go right here. You have to remove. Um, I didn't have to remove it because mine's is missing. I don't know where it's at. But back to the boat that I was having a hard time getting to. I probably can point to it because I really want to show you. Um, look. See, can you look down right here? 
Um, nope, that ain't working. That angle is not working. Let's see. Nope. Yeah, you're gonna have to come to the big hole. All right. I don't know if you guys can see me pointing the screwdriver at it, but it is right there. So for a good um, point of reference, zoom out. I'm going to show um, try to get my screwdriver in frame. All right, so as a point of reference, this is your AC dryer. It sits on the side of the condenser and the radiator on the passenger side. So right beneath this dryer is the boat that I'm trying to get to. So that's a good point of reference for you guys that want to know where the boat is. So back to it. All right, what just happened to me, that boat that I was trying to get to, it was all rusted, rusted pretty bad, and it snapped on me. Um, no worries for me, though, because I have a boat bin, as you can see. But if this happened to you, you can easily go down to Lowe's or Home Depot. They have a great boat selection um, for you guys. But if it happens to this job, you have three other ones holding it in. It, it'll be okay. One less missing. It'll just, it'd be fine. But if you really want to replace it, Home Depot is the way to go. Now, I have it all loose. It appears that I'm ready to pull out my radiator. So I'm going to try that right now. As you can see, these hoses are in my way, so I'm gonna have to run them behind the neck. And it should just pull right up. And that's all she wrote on that. This appears to be a factory radiator, so it was well timed. Just gonna remove my hose clip, hose clamp that I put there earlier. Now, these plastic um, plastic trim pieces are important because it works as a fan shroud. Meaning, uh, go get the fan. Okay. Meaning, it works as a seal. So once the fan is in place, it works as like a rubber seal. So when the fan pull in air, it won't be pulling in air from the cracks. It'll actually be pulling in full air through the front of the radiator. So you guys that think, ah, oh, they're fine, I don't, don't need these, you kind of do. Now, if you do decide not to put them back on there, you won't see the difference. But hey, they designed it for a purpose. So make sure you transfer those over to the new radiator. Let's um, transfer my fan shrouds over. And it looks like this one just slides down like so. It's easier when you have the radiator placed right next to the new one. Slide that in. And how I know this is factory radiator because most mechanics and they leave these on. And this one just, it has these little tabs right here. So you wanna pull up over, kind of, yeah. And it'll come right off. Now, do this one have the little tabs? Nope, it's just gonna have to float there. Yeah, see it doesn't have the little tabs that hold, hold it in, fully secure it, but upside down test it works so we're good now that i have my fan shrouds uh, fan seals on there's still some other things i need to transfer 
This is a drain pipe for the, I guess this is called a petcock or that's the name, I guess that's the name, well, radiator drain. And I'm just gonna transfer that over. Kind of makes a little spout where when you do drain the radiator, it just flows right to the ground. These are like uh, mountain grommets. You wanna make sure they get transfer it over and what I like to do is just replace put the little seal caps on the oven so it won't leak anything and here's the bolt that broke right here as you can see it's broke off in there so these are the four condenser bolts one two three and you have a side one right here so I would say this one and this one will be your most challenging to get to. Um, yeah. Quick lesson for you guys um, about parts. All aftermarket parts are not made the same. Um, I ran into a slight problem. Not a biggie because I can figure it out. I deal with aftermarket parts all the time. But, you know, this is for the expiring mechanics out there or do-it-yourselfers. But this is the issue at hand. Okay, so this is my new radiator right here. Uh, these are my mountain holes for my condenser. Condenser mounts to the radiator. This is the mountain um, place for the old radiator. As you can see, this is a screw-in type. And this one is like a, it's supposed to be like a little, um, I can't think of it right now, but it's a little insert that slips in here to have threads. This radiator didn't come with one. Um, and also, as you can see, the side mount is no way I can go back with the side mount. So it's going to have three, um, unless you guys know a way, you know, comment. Um, down what, what I can do different. Looking at the situation, I, I can't do anything differently. But this radiator is for this car. I'm just letting you guys know you may run into slight issues. So my solution is nuts and bolts. So I'm going to try to place a nut back here in place. Uh, I may have to glue it or wire it up there. I have to place it back there. It make my life a little bit harder, but It'll be fine, it, you know, it is what it is. All right, got all my screws, my bolts, ready to go back in. The same process of how I took it out. Just go in very easy. And roll them back over that way. One thing you don't want to do is force it. This radiator is very delicate. You can easily destroy your new radiator. So the most important thing is it sits down in the grommets. Um, the, the grommets have a little hole that it slides down. And you can easily tell if they're in there just by shifting the radiator side to side. If it don't move, you're good. All right, here comes the hard part. It would have been easy if I had the correct bolts, but it is what it is with at the correct radiator. So now I'm about to fight with this. Hopefully not fight too bad. All right, the struggle is over. My plan worked. So continuing right along, I'm gonna make sure my radiator is still in the mounting brackets, mounting holes, there it is. Whew, 
gosh, that was a struggle. <laughs> it didn't take me too long. I didn't want to bore you too much and have a long drawn out process of me struggling. So I didn't put that on camera. Um, but if you want to see me struggle, please comment down and below. There's plenty of things I struggle on. I will make sure I post that for you guys. So let me know. I remember I was struggling because the radiator was aftermarket and it didn't have the proper mountain stuff that came with it. So that's why I was struggling. I wanted to make sure I made something that was adequate and very functional for long-term purposes. Next step, I'm going to be putting my um, upper radiator braces back on. And go like this. Squeeze that down in there. Oh, let's see, can I get it from back here? It'd be easier. Nope. Do it the way it came off. Now, I'm not gonna fully tighten this down because I wanna loose, leave it a little loose so I can maneuver the other side. And remember, don't go in like this. It goes on like so, because if it goes on like that, it wouldn't be flat and it would just be a big gap. So you gotta make sure the flat surface is on that. Much easier when it's not plastic pieces in the way, like that other side. Now I'm going ahead. Now I'm um, now I'm going ahead and tighten them all down. Now when you're tightening this, it don't have to be that tight. So make sure you don't use a very long ratchet. Make sure you use something short and try to get it from the base of the neck of the ratchet and tighten it down because you don't want to put too much uh, torque on it. Now it's time to connect my radiator hose. So I'm gonna grab my pliers. Got my pliers and my radiator clamp. You wanna be very, I was just about to mention, you wanna be very careful with these because they can pop off just the way it did. It's funny that I was gonna say that because that's exactly what happened. I don't like these to be personally honest with you because they're frankly dangerous. So what am I gonna do? Place it over the radiator and hose, like so, and slide it all the way down. Now, once it's on the hose, it's not dangerous. It's when you're compressing the um, spring loaded clamp, when it's not on the spring, like in free air, just like I did. That's when it can slip and become a projectile. So you want to make sure when you are compressing it, make sure it's somewhere near the hose so you can quickly get it on there quick. All right, next step, 
is the um, radiator fan. Yeah. Got my radiator fan here. I'm going to kind of stuff my wiring harness off to the side. Now I'm going to put this on. I'm going in very carefully and gently. And try to find... Let me see, can I grab my light? But it's these little channels down here that this hook into. So you want to make sure you don't miss the channels. You don't want to make sure it's in front of the channel or it just drop down. So, and it's the same over here, but it's kind of hard to show you because it's right under the radiator. Grab my eight millimeters. Mm -hmm. mm, running into the same issue. <laughs> I'm gonna have to find um, a nut and a bolt to secure that. Uh, aftermarket parts sometimes it make you wanna mm, punch them, but. Hey, it is what it is. <laughs> all right, got my fan all secured thanks to my handy dandy bolt box, which my wife don't like. She says I'm a water, but I proved her wrong today. Point for me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so moving right along, I'm going to go ahead and plug in my radiator fan. Don't forget to do that. That's an important one. Um, oh, I just had my radiator hose. All right. This time I'm gonna go ahead and put back on my radiator hose, the upper radiator hose to be exact. The last step is the air box. That just flops down in there like so. You're gonna wanna plug your crankcase vent back up. I have a 10 millimeter right here. Screw that back down. my eight millimeter screwdriver. Don't forget to tighten back up the hose clamp. And another important one, don't forget to tighten, well, um, not tighten, but plug back in your air temperature sensor and lock it. And looks like I'm finished. Just got finished checking back over my work. And that good people is how you properly install a radiator on the 09 Dodge Charger. By the way, you should check over your work too. Anytime you do any type of job, look back over it. You know, it may be something rubbing, maybe something out of place. Just take that extra couple of minutes to double check everything. Don't hurt. Um, the only thing I got left is to bleed the cooling system. Um, th this cooling system is the same for uh, the first generation chargers. Uh, Chrysler 300s, Dodge Magnums, and I may be forgetting something, but off the top of my head, that's what the setup is on. Um, if you want to check out the bleeding or burping process on this car, I will leave a description, uh, video description somewhere in the screen or um, what, the come. Uh, Link. link yeah <laughs> <laughs> leave a link somewhere you down. always screw that up <laughs> yeah it is what it is <laughs> but alex the car doctor out i enjoyed you guys today if you have any questions pertaining to this job 
let me know in the comments down below. I love you guys. Alex the Car Doctor out.